So thank you very much, and first of all, um, thank you to the committee for um, allowing me to be here and for allowing me to talk about our project. Um, my name is Jens Hahn. I'm a PhD student in the group of Edda Klipp, uh, the group of theoretical biophysics at the Humboldt University in Berlin, Germany. And um, I will talk about our approach to um, get a large-scale comprehensive model of, of yeast in a modular approach. So the first question would be, why do we do yeast? Um, yeast is one of the most prominent model organisms for eukaryotic cells. That means uh, we have a lot of data available, we have not many mathematical models already available where we can um, check hypotheses and uh, see what other people have done. And we have a lot of experience in our group of uh, yeast modeling. We also have our own um, small yeast lab where we can make experiments and get uh, some data out of that. Um, I put you here some of the characteristics of the disease Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is the one we are modeling. So first of all, we have about 6,000 genes, <coughs> and um, we have a cell cycle length of about 120 minutes, and that is the goal for our simulations. We want to simulate one cell cycle, um, meaning from one budding event to another budding event in yeast, the division is asymmetric and it's called budding, meaning after the budding event you have uh, two cells, one is a bit larger and one is a bit smaller. The larger cell is called the mother and uh, the smaller cell is called the daughter cell and we want to simulate the fate of one um, new mother basically that uh, give, is giving birth to another daughter cell. So we simulate one cell cycle only. Um, now to our approach, as I said, it's a modular approach, it's a top-down approach. So we divide the cell into main cell functions. I've put you here the five we are focusing at the moment. That's first of all um, a transport module consisting of um, the ion homeostasis and the nutrient uptake. Secondly, we have the metabolism, meaning fermentation, respiration, and the um, construction of precursors or the um, uh, production of precursors for the other modules. Then, of course, the cell cycle module that drives the whole um, thing. Uh, then we have a growth module, meaning uh, responsible for the volume growth, for the budding process, um, and of course also for the cell wall synthesis. And last but not least, we have the gene expression module, meaning transcription, translation, and protein degradation in the yeast cell. Um, now, our main focus in this um, project is the interconnectivity of these modules. So what is the communication between these modules? How do uh, metabolism and cell, cell cycle communicate during this um, uh, growth of, of the cell? And you could also call it the contextualization of the modules. So how is the metabolism behaving in the intracellular context of the other modules? Um, most modules that are available at the moment are just focusing on one certain cell um, state and we really try to get the context of the modules because the growth pattern changes during, during growth. The metabolism has to fulfill different processes and so on. So the main question we want to answer is first of all the functional interplay of these, of these modules. Then we want to find out how is the resource allocation um, done in the cell. So where does the nutrients go, where does the energy go during the cell cycle. We, of course, want to tackle the cell stresses. As you notice, we don't have a signaling module yet. That means that this is just um, a basic uh, <coughs> test of, of cell stresses. And last but not least, we want to identify knowledge gaps that is uh, done as well in the process of producing the model. Um, as also when the model is running, then we want to check different hypotheses and check where are knowledge gaps in the literature or in our knowledge about the yeast cell. <coughs> now, what is the advantage of a modular approach? As I said, we divide the cell into these main cell functions. Well, first of all, you can develop these modules individually. So you have, we have some kind of task forces or group work, um, and the experts can really focus on their particular cell processes and do not need to um, be bothered with all the other modules as soon as the interfaces with the other modules are defined. So we define the interfaces between metabolism and cell cycle and then our people can, can work on the metabolism module and do not need to know what is happening in the cell cycle model because the interface is um, defined beforehand. Um, the next advantage is the exchangeability, of course. 
um, you can have sub-modules in these, in these models. Um, you can exchange the metabolism model with one that has more, more details or less details, or you want to check another hypothesis in one of these modules. So we have two cell cycle modules, for example, to check which one fits best the um, experimental data. Um, that leads also to a scalability of, of our approach. So you can increase and de decrease the level of detail. You can add other modules. Um, and that makes it very flexible to our, to our purpose. And last but not least, you can of course do different mathematical formalisms of uh, different of these modules. At the moment we are focusing only on um, ODE models, so all of these modules are um, described in an ODE formalism, but we are also working um, on different formalisms like rule-based or agent-based modules for um, some of these, of these sub-modules. Um, of course, we need a simulation environment for that. It's, it's not um, like plug and play and then put it into Kopasi in that um, regard. So uh, we have, first of all, a database at hand. That means we store the experimental data we use to parameterize our modules. We have them in our database. And we have, of course, the modules themselves in the database. So if you want to run the simulation, then you can choose which modules you want to run together. And the framework can automatically merge and combine these modules to get one simulation out of them. The simulation environment itself um, provides also test environments. You can see them as unit tests for all of the modules, so you can all of the time check. Um, is my model still running OK? Is the interface working correctly and this stuff? So you have test environments for the modules. And uh, then you have two basically different versions how to simulate or different uh, possibilities to simulate the model. First of all, as long as you don't uh, have anything else than ODE, we just merge the modules to one large ODE model, which we can then solve in Kopasi. Or we do a consolidation of simulation results if you have different mathematical formalisms. Um, I don't want to get into detail right now because of the lack of time. But if you have questions um, concerning the consolidation of simulation results, then I'm happy to answer your question afterwards or see you at my poster. Um, and last but not least, of course, the simulation environment can also be used for analyzing the simulation results or for visualization of the data. Now, how do we construct um, the modules? Uh, first of all, to define what is the module granularity, what level of detail we need in the modules, the modules have to answer two um, basic questions. The one is pretty obvious. Um, you need enough level of detail to describe the cell process itself. So the metabolism module has to have enough detail to explain how metabolism behaves. But um, the second one is not that obvious. You have to have enough detail in the modules to make the other modules um, or enable the other modules to explain their process as well. So for example here, in metabolism, the metabolism needs to produce amino acids, nucleic acids, and um, energy in form of ATP to make the gene expression module run because they, they need it as a precursor. So this would be one example for these um, level of granularity. Um, then secondly, we have these interfaces, as I said already, and the framework merges the species automatically. So we use annotations like KB IDs, GO annotations, SBO annotations. Um, to really unambiguously identify all the species and then the framework is able to merge these or combine these modules together to get one simulation result. So um, now to Kopasi. Kopasi is uh, the heart of our simulation at the moment. We use it for module construction, for module parameterization, especially with the future of the parameter scan, which is really handy. Um, then we simulate our ODE model with it export the, the time course again and um, visualize it in our framework. So the main functions we're going to use is the SQL import-export. We control Compasi via the Python bindings. Our framework is uh, completely written in Python. Uh, we use the ODE solver, of course, as I said, the parameter scan. And we're working right now on the idea of uh, putting the gene regulation module in the hybrid solver to have the gene regulation module uh, be simulated stochastically while the rest is simulated deterministically with the wild ODE solver. Um, so this is our workflow at the moment. Uh, this part I already explained. The framework merges the modules together to one uh, com combined ODE model. 
that is exported in SPML, loaded in Copasi, simulated in Copasi, and the simulation results are returned to the framework to visualize and analyze it there. Um, for the file exchange formats, we have um, three available. One is, of course, SPML, so you can uh, input the modules you've written um, into the framework or into the database of the framework as an SPML model. Uh, since all of us um, are uh, Python developers, we also have a Python um, version of our modules at hand, and you can import and export the modules into a certain Python module description we have developed. Um, and last but not least, we use SPTAP, which is a standardized table format, which was also developed in our group and uh, published last month. Um, and you can store experimental data as well as modules in SPTAP to have an exchange format for the database. Now at the moment, um, we identified some bugs in the visualization of the SPML export, although these are our main construction sites at the moment. Um, we're quite confident that we can solve these problems in the next week, and we hope to submit the whole thing um, this year. In the long run, of course, our goal is to add the signaling module to be able to um, simulate different conditions and stresses, including signaling in, in, in the cell. Um, that means, of course, increasing the level of detail in the particular modules. That means the redefinement of the interfaces and an integrated testing of the interfaces. And as I said already, we're also working on different mathematical formalisms for the modules, and that will go ahead with the addition of the signaling module then. Um, now, that leaves me with the acknowledgments. Um, as it was already suggested, this is not a one-man show. This, <laughs> um, this is really a group effort, so everyone in our group is participating and working on this project. So uh, first of all, I, have to, I want to thank my supervisor, Ella Cliff, for allowing me to work on that, on that project. I really want to thank all the people in, the, in, in our group who worked um, uh, on some of the modules, developed the, the, the simulation environment, and so on. And I also want to thank Frank and, and Sven for helping us with Copasi and the bindings and answering our um, sometimes a bit stupid questions, maybe. And <laughs> um, last but not least, um, I personally don't have a funding organization, but these are the main funding organizations of the people in my group, so I want to thank them as well for um, allowing these brilliant people to work in the group and allow me to work with them together. So thank you for your attention. Thank you.